uh, regardless of which economy and, and which jurisdiction you're looking at at the moment, there seems to be a sense of complacency because overall Omicron has been milder. Do you think that is what the next step is going to be? And what do you foresee over the next three, six, 12 months for this pandemic? Omicron came out of the blue, so I think it's very difficult to have a, a, a really confident prediction about what might happen next. Mm. We could have another variant that comes from Omicron. We could have a, an, an offshoot of, Omicron, of Delta, sorry. I think it's very difficult to predict, but, but I don't think COVID is going away. So we're still going to have to be prepared to, to, to keep an eye on things and be ready to bring back some additional measures if cases spike and it, and it seems like it would be necessary. There is fatigue, right? Political fatigue, uh, fatigue from small businesses and just from, 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 from parents, from people generally. How do you overcome that, particularly as you have a lot of places saying, we've, we've reopened now, we're not going to kind of put the genie back in the box. What happens then when you have another variant that is potentially worse than Omicron? And on top of that, there's reluctance for people who say, look, we've had, we've had our vaccines, we've had our boosters. Are we really going to get, you know, boosters every three to four months to deal with this? Well, firstly, I don't think we'll be getting boosters every three or four months. I think vaccines will be available for people who want them. But after the end of Omicron waves, I think there'll be a lot of immunity in the population from vaccines and also to some extent from infections. I don't think we'll see the need for large scale lockdowns again. So I don't think we have to worry too much about those. What I'm thinking about is maybe some of the measures might be needed again, maybe next winter in the Southern Hemisphere, that's going to be in, in six months time. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's a long way away. Maybe we need some restrictions at that point to suppress surges in transmission. But I think hopefully the worst is past for much of the world. It's uh, comforting to hear that you don't think that we will be required to continue to get boosters, especially when uh, we don't know for sure how long immunity lasts. But is it what you're saying that because there is immunity in the broader population that we should be fine without boosters? And what happens to perhaps the more uh, the, the poorer nations of the world? Well, so firstly, for boosters, I think we know that the, the greatest effect of boosters only lasts for maybe three or four months. And we have a longer term protection against severe disease, which you get from two doses. You can boost that a little bit with a third dose. It may also get boosted with infection. And that's going to be there for quite some time. In terms of poorer countries, the, the World Health Organization has a COVAX program, which I don't think has delivered yet as much as they were hoping to those countries. I think we'll see more vaccines going there. And in, in the coming months and the coming years, I hope the vaccines will, will be available around the world, particularly to older people who will benefit the most from regular, maybe annual or twice annual vaccination. Mm. Uh, ben, in Hong Kong right now, given how uh, overwhelmed the hospitals are, authorities are now urging the young and those with mild symptoms to actually isolate by themselves at home. What will this do to the trajectory of the pandemic there? Well, in terms of the case counts, actually, we'll see a, a, a kind of drop off in the rising cases because now a lot of people are going to stay at home when they're sick. Even if they have a rapid test positive, they're not going to get confirmed. So that's not going to get into the case counts. So we, we've seen a lot of increases in case counts in the past two weeks. That may slow down, but it may not be a real picture of the infections because now hospitals are, are saying they're going to save space for the elderly and for younger children. And older children and adults, I think, will, will be asked to isolate at home. Uh, so it's really a mitigation move. It's, it's recognizing that the containment uh, is, is going to be very difficult from here on. We've never seen a city or a country be able to clamp down, particularly when it comes to Omicron, from the numbers that we're now seeing in Hong Kong. What is the end game here? Can they continue to pursue COVID zero when it's clearly not COVID zero anymore? Even if they do get to 90 percent, uh, you know, does that kind of help things when it comes to accelerating and opening up? Well, that's a question that many people have, because, of course, in, in the next two months, maybe three months, a lot of people in Hong Kong are going to get infected. Unfortunately, it's going to be very difficult to turn it around now. So we're going to see a big peak. We're going to see come down the other side, go back towards lower numbers again, like some other places in the world have already experienced. The question then is whether the Hong Kong government is going to suddenly push again to go all the way to zero and then to try and stay at zero. In other words, temporarily 
pause the zero COVID approach now for a couple of months and then go back to it in two or three months time when we have a very high level of population immunity in Hong Kong and maybe uh, it wouldn't be necessary to protect public health anymore with, with a zero COVID strategy. We may still see the Hong Kong government choosing to do that. So at, at the minute it's unclear.